see what happens. Okay. You need to move. Flynn did not work I'll today. I'll talk to Mo about it. Okay. So or I can bring my no, package. she's on vacation. Okay. I'm taking minutes. So okay. like, okay. speak slowly and carefully. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I'll have to turn to the south of the this. Okay. Right. Oh. Yeah. So I call to order our meeting. Um, present is Dan Wright, Maureen Cole, Dan Millard, Fred Haynes, Laura Ingham, myself, Claire Kellogg, D.A. Hildenbrand, and Eileen Sheridan. And I call the meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. Okay. And first on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at that. Yeah. I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And moving on to item number three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, public comments. Did you want to talk here? No. Well, you can talk under communications. Yeah. Okay. But we do have one other member of the public, so I just wanted to give him a chance yeah. if he wants yes. to say anything. No, I'll just keep my mouth shut at this one. Right. Okay. Sounds right. good. Thank you. So um, I would suggest that we skip to the building update at this okay. point in time and invite the architect up to mm -hmm. meet everybody. So mm -hmm. Sid, okay. if you want to come on forward, that would be great. So everybody, this is Hi. our Hi. architect, Hi. Sid Welcome. Scott. Thank you. What is the name? Nice to see you. Sid Scott. Sid, Sid Scott. Scott. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That'd be great. And we got some brilliant ideas. And then he will, <laughs> believe me. This is an Avon yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> That's my other job. Yeah. <laughs> There's brilliance there, too. Thank you, Sid. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, Sid, the only person whose name is not up there is Eileen Sheridan at the end. Mm -hmm. And she's our newest member, so we're getting a nameplate made for her. So. Nice. I'll remind yeah. you, don't You're in the nameplate phase. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Great. This is red button on, yep. Yeah, share away. So, well, first, thanks for having me. And uh, I just wanted a chance to come and say hello and tell about what we're up to. I think Mo's probably keeping you up to speed, but um, we're very excited to get started. And, and thank you for the opportunity. This is going to be an amazing project, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing project. Um, so uh, we're starting our process. I actually came out last Friday and uh, did what I call the move in and understand. But we just hung out and had a chance to see how the library currently operates and, and how folks use it, and extremely helpful. Also to see how it interacts with the park. Uh, and then also I was doing a little parking assessment to see what the parking situation is around there. So gave you a really nice, good, good background on, on where things currently are. Um, we're taking the tour on Monday, which I believe you're all aware of that. Is anybody coming on the, uh, the yeah, tour? Two people are able to make it. Awesome, awesome. So we get a chance to see some nice examples locally, and then uh, Mo and I will be taking a tour in Denver on the 25th and 6th mm -hmm. uh, of April uh, to see some other examples, some other ideas, how libraries operate, that sort of thing. So it'll be, give us a nice perspective. And then the, the other part of our team, uh, Humphreys Pulley Architects that are out of Denver, uh, that will be really providing a lot of expertise on the technical side of library design. They've done more than 70 libraries and also a lot of historical uh, renovation work. Uh, they've done over eight Carnegie libraries um, and so they bring a lot of expertise in that area. So it's going to be, uh, you know, we're, that's our team and, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing this. Um, so some of the other things that we're looking at, we've got the May 30 or April 30th, May 1st uh, mind-breaking session. Right, and I have that in front of you guys. Yep, yep. yep. And you're one of the big stakeholder groups. So I know mm -hmm. it's kind of awkward timing, but I'm really hoping that mm -hmm. several of you can come to at least one, if not both days. Okay. It's a great opportunity to, to be able to pick your minds, basically, uh, in the process. It says mind-breaking. It doesn't hurt. It's, there's not a, <laughs> it's not a painful process. Um, and so we'll be doing that over the two-day period. Then we'll be having the community meeting on the evening of April 30th, which we will be doing kind of a mini version of a mind-breaking exercise with the community and 
Do you have a time for that? Seven. Seven o'clock at the library. What day is that? Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. That's Wednesday. a Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Oh. Is it? Down. Great. Too much info, I know. Oh, well, much info on that piece no, of paper. I, I, have, I have my friend here to help me. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm a finder, what can I say? Yeah. And we'll be going, uh, Mo and I, and I believe, DA, you're coming as well to yes. the conference in Salt Lake, which will be awesome. I put it in my library journal. Um, it's great. There's tours of local libraries and then an all-day conference on, you know, what's latest and greatest, what are the issues libraries are facing, that kind of thing. So very, very informative. So that'll happen uh, May 15th, 16th. And then when the bond passes on the 20th, we'll be ready to set up our studio in the library. Mo and I have been scoping it out. We've got a spot picked out. And I want you to know that we have moved everything down the other You're direction. Already? Already. All right. We're in anticipation, and there's plenty of space. Good deal. He'll be right next to the fireplace using one of our round tables. Mm -hmm. We just pushed everything down, and it, it'll work really it, well. The table matches nicely in there, too. The, the table's <laughs> part of the set, actually. Yeah. yeah. So my plan is to be out once a week, or myself or somebody from my staff will be here once a week, and it's an opportunity to just informally talk with folks about what they're seeing and what they think about the library process, and it's, it's a great way to get input. And, and the other part of it is, is keeping folks up to speed on what's going on. Mm -hmm. So we'll have things posted, and, and then we'll also online, we'll have a Facebook page and all those kinds of things, so keeps keeps everybody informed on what's going on. Yes? Yes, uh, Don Wright. Uh, are you going to like a blog or anything like that about what kind of questions come up or um, possibly we figured we would be using Facebook for sure to post you know what if there's you know something new that comes up that sort of thing okay. right. and how long are you anticipating that once a week scenario for uh, probably till we get halfway through construction documents so okay. which is no, it's going to be probably a three month. Wow. Okay. So through the summer. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll become a fixture. <laughs> it should work. I, that's what I'm thinking. We'll probably start <laughs> taking on some tasks. Sid, yes, Carl. I'm not the only person here, but what does adjacencies, what does that word mean? Adjacencies? So that would relate to where would the, um, just an example, like teen area be in relationship oh. to the oh. children's area? Um, you know, so it's, it's taking the blocks that you'll have in the li library and say, what are the adjacencies? What do you want next to each other? What do you want to have further away? So it's, it's a way to start prioritizing where space would go in the library. I want to make a, a quick comment. Um, the, the, the board might not understand that, that this um, coming out and, and having a space at the, the library and having exposure there to the public. It's an, I've never had it's an unique. architect ever do it yeah, before. I'm um, saying that. It's, it's awesome. going to be quite unique and yeah. I think it's going to be really productive. Although I know it's going to take a lot of your staff time. but Well, we're working on still, the project and it's, it's a way to, you know, we're going to be working there. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's going to be an active process for us. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. Do you anticipate having a set time um, every week, or will it sort of fluctuate in terms of meeting different people's schedules, in terms of meeting a different contingency at different times of the day? No, we'll have it consistent. We okay. haven't worked out exactly what the okay. hours are going to be, but we want to make it consistent so people know we're going to be there. And, okay. You know. Okay. I'm just wondering if there's any fluctuation in terms of evening hours for the people who mm -hmm. work during the day, and right, mm -hmm. that's when they're using the services as opposed to morning story time. Right. Do you know. So I thought about that. Those are different thinking, users, yeah. Thinking that you know maybe once a month we do a later afternoon mm -hmm. to evening, you know, shift that kind okay. of thing. But it's a great point. We want to cover the whole gamut, and okay. you know we know a lot of folks, and just by observing, you know, there's a lot of activity that starts in the evening with mm -hmm. it. So. Thanks. In the morning. In the you morning. get a whole group yeah. of story timers in the morning that <laughs> don't come back in the evening. Yeah. My favorite. We can yeah. set your table up downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> there should be yeah, there could be that'd be good. And it sounds like you're getting geared up to get your ear as close to the ground on this as you yeah. possibly can. Right. So that's a big I'm a big believer in um, a very interactive process and so I think that's where we work best. We do a lot of rolling out sketch paper with markers and just talking about ideas and you know there's going to be a lot of ideas that will come with this I think 
And so, you know, prioritizing, figuring out what's the best move, that's it's going to be a great process. How do we answer um, questions from the public now that we have you mm -hmm. uh, on interim? Right. right. We're on contract right now to basically do the due diligence phase. So right. the goal being that we'll have all the background information ready. You know, we're done with that part. So programming. But I think the public's going to uh, jump to Z as opposed to A and B where we are mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And say, well, what's it going to look like? Yes. How, how do we answer that question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come help shape it. That's Thank the, you. There that you is go. the answer. Right. I like, I like that. that. Come help shape it. The other thing that when people have asked, um, Letting them know that that Sid has been retained on a limited contract until we know what happens with the bond, and because we don't want to spend too much taxpayer money before we know the outcome of that. Yeah. Actually, everybody goes, "Oh, that makes sense." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they they know then only so much work can be done until then too. Right. Mm -hmm. but, until, until the bond passes, we can't really yeah. get into mm -hmm. the yeah. details of the yeah. thing. It wouldn't be fiscally responsible. Right. So the design process will not kick in until May twenty first. <laughs> That's the day after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're getting favorable news, we could start that night. That's right. <laughs> we could. <laughs> Thank we'll be we'll doing something that night. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we did uh, met with the uh, city commission uh, yesterday afternoon, and I thought that went very well. It, it went very well. Fun. David it's Frazier was very pleased. Yeah. Nice. You know, the big question was, to me, was the work that's been done prior, there's been three renderings setting up in the library for a long time, is, you know, what do people think? Is this it? Yeah. You, you know, I still want to, you know, come back with something new, and they're like, whoa, we didn't want that, we wanted this. So it was great to get feedback from the city commission. No, it's, you know, we're looking at any ideas, and, and I think that, you know, they're expecting that. They were very open to different ideas. Mm -hmm. They basically said, I thought Carol phrased it really well she said you know these are the images that we have seen mm -hmm. there may be better ideas that we just haven't seen but until we see them we don't know mm -hmm. and so we're very open to new ideas mm -hmm. and you know there's some some guidelines like you know save as much park as possible da 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 da, da but you know they're open to different concepts yeah. the two Which things that I heard helpful. very strongly was the preserve as much park as possible and not detract from the existing existing Carnegie Bell right. much mm -hmm. you know as I, I told them, it's, you know, it's an iconic image in the middle of a park. I mean, I fully get mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So. Same page. Yeah. So we're ready to get off and running. Good. We actually have got off and running, so. Yeah. And he also <laughs> met with the exec team yesterday, which is all the department heads, just to pick their brains a little bit is like a pre-app, pre-app, which is mm -hmm. what you do when you start going into the planning process. So. Um, Tony Conkle, who is in charge of that department, is particularly helpful, but also John Lewis from Public Works. Mm -hmm. Those are the two departments that are most going to be involved, but then also like um, Scott Archer with Parks. You know, we sit in a park. They mm -hmm. have to maintain the park, you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. the trees, this and that. So it was really good. He met everybody, so he knows they're all the players now, and, um, and they were able to give him a little bit of input. We, we'll go back to obviously we'll go back to certain people over and over and over but mm -hmm. it was a nice high level discussion about you know where they're coming from and we get down to the nitty gritty that'll be at a pre-app and you know their staff will primarily be doing that part of it but it's good to get the flavor of where each of the departments are at uh, I thought some nice comments from um, David from just the political side mm -hmm. of the project and all that so mm -hmm. it's a good background and we're ready to go looking forward to it right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Very exciting. We've all been waiting a long time. Hundred years. Yeah. Not some of us, but <laughs> no. Well, wow. the library wasn't too small for a hundred years. Well, I know that. Just fifty or sixty of it. <laughs> yeah. Fifty years ago, yeah. probably. Probably so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So, um, in relationship to this, we have um, a project manager as well. The project manager firm that's been selected is Shields, Oblitz, and Johnson, and the person we'll be working with is Charlie Ballman, and he also met the exec team and city commission last night, but he flew out for a two-week vacation today, so he couldn't be here today. And the only other building update that I can think of is the building committee that we talked about creating, 
and that is DA accepted, of course, for the library board, and then Brian Shaw accepted, and Denise Kai accepted, which is great. Denise is awesome, and you know, she helped build this building, and she's also in charge of like facilities. So those are pretty good snags. So with our project manager and with um, Linda Ackerson and I from the library, that's like the building committee who will be doing some of the more detailed decision making. Right. And meeting occasionally, often, Excellent. through the process. We haven't yeah, really taken any action on that, right? Well, I think last time we did talk about making we a motion did. on I it. I think we did. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, last time we, we wanted to uh, wait until this yes. meeting mm -hmm. to, to make sure the confirmation sure the, of acceptance. The, the group mm -hmm. was assembled. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I move we accept the panel as, as stated. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See how excited they are for this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it moving. Oh, we, we some energy. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Got it. I have to do minutes. Linda's not You're writing everything. That's good. Yeah, I'm trying. Good. Not everything mm -hmm. you said. Sorry. <laughs> and, so, and said no. Uh, no mothers came up to the desk and said, "Who's that guy hanging around?" I was. I was. I let everybody. Well, Mo Walker introduced me to everybody, which was okay. really nice. And then I, you know, if somebody was staring at me a little funny, I tell, "I'm not a creepy guy. Just hanging out." You know, <laughs> where I'm observing. No, it was. It was quite okay. civil and pleasant. <laughs> Uh, one other thing I should mention, I uh, got a call from KXL Radio today. Oh, that's right. Really they uh, saw there was an article on Oregon uh, Live about the project from the, it was a report from the city commission meeting last night. Mm -hmm. So I got a call from one of the reporters and asked some questions, and I think they're going to have it on the news tomorrow. So oh, that's okay. getting some buzz. Did you get a call from? I have been here the whole time, oh, so I yeah. don't know. I was suggesting you call you. Yeah. And get more I got your... It was nice. It was nice. They were interested and yeah. and uh, had some good questions. Yeah, it's great. Do either of our audience members have any questions for our architect? Okay. I'll be sending you a lot. Good. I might have one question. I think you have to come up and state your name and um, be recorded, please. My name is Bob LaSalle and I live in Oregon City. Um, I'm a little concerned further down the line when you start cutting down some of those trees up there about the public reaction that you may receive so just a heads up on that mm -hmm. and then if I can offer any assistance on the HVAC part of it Is that I your spent area? Uh, almost 50 years in the business Great. Mm -hmm. Inside so I can are. offer my opinion of any biz that you I'd might like get. to complain about our current one <laughs> really? yeah I'm sure it's the ductwork so. <laughs> okay. that's all I have so Thank Bob you. just so you know um, I did meet with um, Prac, the Parks and uh, Recreation Advisory Committee and NRC as well which meets after this just to like so that we started having those conversations about the trees and some of them are diseased and we've had a tree study done, so some of them would be coming down anyway, but I don't know which, you know, so that's, yeah. It will well, be, I had it will the same be hard. thing happen in my own yard, you yeah. know, when I cut a tree down in the front yard, I had some strange looks, so mm -hmm. I'm a little bit aware of that. Yeah. And these oh, are big ones. These, Those are beautiful trees. They're beautiful big there. trees, yeah. 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 So okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anything else for our architect? Thanks for coming today. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you, you very much. Nice meeting you. Thanks Appreciate for being Appreciate the opportunity. Here. We're uh, really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the okay, 30th and the 1st. To it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Great. Okay. Thanks, and we'll see thank you Monday. You. Mm -hmm. and then we go back to your report. Uh, yeah. And we go back to the boring stuff. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. this is so fun, isn't it, to talk about buildings? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, on to the library director's report. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got for us? So, um, so we've been talking a little bit about the trend of the um, <clears throat> the checkouts, the circulation numbers just going down just a little. It came back up just a little 
um, to 95% of last year. So that's still like very, very good. But it, it still, it was like over 100% of the year be previous year for a while. Our foot traffic is over 100% of last year. It's like at 103% of last year. So it's kind of weird. It's like we're seeing more people checking out fewer items. So that means they're in the building doing other things right. like internet, Wi Fi, reading within the building, reading within the right. building, exactly. Story time, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, I'm not sure how to phrase this. I know that you guys have a new book bin type thing that sits there. You got the nice TV monitor showing mm -hmm. what's going on in the library mm -hmm. with all the other materials, but you got this nice bin of, of take, take a book. We call them boomerang books. Boomerangs, yeah. Yeah. How long has that been going on? That's been going on about probably less than six months. And um, it's just, we, well, that's kind of our, one of our responses to people who may not have cards and may not want to go any further down the road of getting a card. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure that people can take books that, mm -hmm. and these are, they're going to come back to us or not, but they're like, probably have been weeded off of our shelves but they're still in good condition so they would either they would probably go to the friends so instead of going to the friends they go to boomerang books because you know we buy multiple copies of things and then after a while you don't need the multiple right. copies I mean, you and buy 700 copies of harry potter well not quite but yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah, yeah exactly it's like after after the hubbub dies down it's like okay we've got yeah. 700 copies of harry potter what do we do with them well exactly and so the, we just um really want to be sure that all portions of the public that come in, even though most people can get a library card, there are people who are either blocked or they can't provide the documentation we need to get a card, and um, or they feel really uncomfortable for one reason or another. And so we just want to be sure they have access to reading materials, not just in the building, but away from the building. And of course, if you're in the building, one reason that we make the computers available to anybody even without a card is that to me that's kind of the same kind of service as you would provide if somebody walked in the building and started reading a book mm -hmm. you know it's it's like at that level that I just feel it's so fundamental that it should be available to everybody mm -hmm. so that's something else yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that that might be part of part of the traffic is, is uh, it those. could be a little could bit be. yeah no. part of the traffic meaning people coming in or people not checking out people not checking out Oh. They use those instead. Because they're going with those, which you know, doesn't require you to check them out. Right. And our, um, <clears throat> our uh, well, Linda had an idea earlier, and she said, well, the economy's getting better. Well, and you know what? It is. So maybe people are just buying more books instead of what they did. I don't know. What, what kind of barriers are there to getting a library card? If it you're seems homeless so. and you don't have a permanent you, address. If you don't have a permanent address, yeah. street address then, or mailing address where you're getting mail. Yeah. Can't you just use the Carnegie's address? No. no. You have to show way. proof of, like, mm -hmm. where you're the But that's where they're taking their shower, so. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope not, because we try not to have that activity going on there. Uh. Yeah. But, um, or like, say, for instance, you have over $25 in fines, then oh, you're yes. blocked from checking things out. There are yeah. a lot of people with that situation. Hmm. Yeah. So. Well. But that's one reason we have twice right. a year, at least oh, yeah. we do a matching fines thing. Yeah, right. So that yeah. then people can try to get those down to a reasonable yeah. level. Because we really don't want the, the money so much as we want the, the, the materials, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so whatever can facilitate that happening. Mm -hmm. um, but so while I'm on that topic, we will be having um, a matching fines for the week of um, our, like our anniversary area. There's going to be an art show on the Saturday of June 21st that uh, Three Rivers Art Guild will be doing and that will kick off our week of matching fines and I think we'll call it something like an anniversary sale or whatever mm -hmm. so that we'll like try to get into a routine okay. and tradition of like twice a year having mm -hmm. the holiday one and then six months later mid-year have yeah. that one so people they get they get real adjusted to having those believe me and they ask all the time so it's a big hit and those you would are, not believe the money the, we bring the in. The canned food one that you guys do. Um, we don't do the canned food ones at this location yeah. because we just really do not have the space for all that. And in the past, people also found that people were not bringing in food that was worthy of really. And then you had to be like a judge of 
Like, no, that doesn't, no, that's not going to fly. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It, it gets really sticky. So. Fair enough. Literally. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the ebook um, circulation is going up, but it's not enough to make up that difference between the book circulation going down that tiny, tiny amount. And the self check stuff is going up, the fines and fees were up. We had more programs with a fewer people, however, at each program. Mm -hmm. So some of that is like okay with me because the quality of the program and the people who are there are so very happy that you've had that program. So for instance, the chicken coop program or the one on um, uh, your heritage, doing a heritage book for your family. You know, some of those were big hits with the people that went to them. And those are people that might not come to the library for any other reason but that program. Right. Which is so it's really great exposure for the library. Um, Can I get back to checkouts for just a moment? Yeah, and I think yeah. I might have asked this a couple a couple meetings ago. But is there any way to divide checkouts by ch like? Have you seen a drop in the children's checkouts as opposed to oh, adult I can, checkout? I can look that up and let you know. I'm just curious about that. Yeah, it's exactly. not urgent, but I'm just if it's a decrease in where the decrease is, if it's across the board, or if it's... Um, well, so, it really looks... It's hard to say, no. because last year they split the teens and the children's children apart, now. and yeah. so that gives you kind of false numbers in that area, or it used to be all together. Mm -hmm. But the adult one is certainly down. That's the drop-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah got another data question for you sure on the self check mm -hmm. is that those numbers I'm seeing are those individual patron numbers or those individual item items numbers? okay yeah items because I know when I go in there I'll check out 12 14 things at a time mm -hmm. so you're the one that's <laughs> yeah that's great thanks um, oh and that last paragraph is wrong so we have started tracking how much time we spend on specific technology, but this sentence is, does not reflect last month. So avoid that. Okay. <laughs> Somebody lost her concentration. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the events for last month, we had a lot of events. Um, Willie Blouton was awesome. Claire, you were at that one, weren't you? I thought he was so good. I really enjoyed yeah, it. I really enjoyed it too. I keep thinking he was about really it good. Still. And um, the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association met there. We try and have them at least once a year. And the, a huge crowd came with lots of great questions about the building. And it was, it was really good. I was so pleased I was there and that they were there. Um, the greenest building was the movie. And then, then just this last time, that drew 20 people. Um, and then last time we had Happy, which drew like 26 people. And it was an excellent discussion. Mm -hmm. Linda was there. She can vouch for me. It was really good. Mm -hmm. Next month is a place at the table. And if we have any event where we do a food collection thing, it should be that one because that's all about hunger in America. Mm -hmm. And the person who's speaking is um, like the food bank person or something. I mean, some big wig in the state of Oregon. So it'll be really good. Okay. Yeah, the movies are really, really fun. The crowd that comes really enjoys them and there's some people that always come, but then there's some new people each time too. And uh, it's just really fun. I wish we could still serve wine and beer. We can't, but that's all right. Oh. <laughs> um, reading Relit is doing really well. That's our reading challenge program. And we're in our third month of that. Uh, Ray Gordon was a huge hit. Um, that was February, I think. I missed it, but maybe it was March. Yeah, and I guess I was in Indianapolis, yeah. and. Um, so I kept hearing about how wonderful she was. And so I finally just wrote her and I said, would you be our house band? And she said, yes, I'll be your house band. So I don't know what that means, but this library has a house band. That means we are so cool. She'll, she'll gin one up and bring it. Take that yeah. Wesley and do that. Yeah, take that Wesley in. We should put that on the Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. And then we had a, a program on um, best books and reads, and that was pretty good too. And Robin also, um, Bierbauer did a staff training that afternoon, which was really well received by staff. They yeah. really enjoyed it. And then we, um, so Linda and I went to the Public Li Library Association Conference in Indianapolis. It was fabulous, because it was all library public library focused. Not just library focused, but public library focused. And um, 
it's, it's kind of funny though because some of the things we most enjoyed were things from Portland hmm. um, yeah so there's a business called I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head I think I sent you guys the link already they build like children's literacy like furniture and play activities With the mm -hmm. tri yeah. Things? yeah yeah I saw that and um, you will see those at Fort Vancouver Library mm -hmm. and they have like a whole room of them they're very very expensive but they're very very interactive and you can customize mm -hmm. and so they're like oh yeah just start filling out this form and we'll just start working with you on that and I'm like okay slow down Nelly we'll get in touch with you but it would be really cool to have some of that because mm -hmm. um, I think our children's area just needs to be spectacular it just needs to be awesome so they were there and um, the gal that was in charge was like carrying around her baby and one of the little mm -hmm. baby things and mm -hmm. I'm like good advertising mm -hmm. but um, so that was really good but we went to several programs that were on topic so I went to one that was on sustainable building but what was interesting wasn't just about the building it was also about like operations and having like safety policies in place and just it was very very broad and um, the presenting library was Pikes Peak Library District and that'll be one of the libraries that we go visit in um, Colorado that's actually my home district and they actually put up a slide of my home Carnegie and I almost just jumped out of my seat and started screaming but it was like, too many people you know and our architect Dennis Humphreys from Denver was there so I was able to connect with him that was really really good but did I send you guys my notes on this? No, because no, what I'll, I'll so, go ahead and send so. you my notes. Mm -hmm. um, because I just thought that it, I just got so much out of it. You know, it was really, really good. Yeah. Send notes. So <clears throat> our upcoming programs are um, tomorrow night we're having our Stafford Poetry event with Paul Ann Peterson, mm -hmm. Poet Laureate, and Lassa Ninata former poet laureate and um, the theme is war and peace because um, William Stafford was a conscientious objector and spent his war years in a camp doing community service and Las Inunata was um, interned in a or interred interred right um, in a Japanese I mean an American concentration camp in for Japanese and then um, another poet is coming, Andres uh, Bergerkiss, and he um, fled Europe as a very young boy and lost like 14 members in concentration camps. Mm -hmm. And then there's like my father, who was POW for three and a half years, who was never the same afterwards. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just very, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. how can you be for war, but uh, we're in it like all the time. No, that was World War II. Two. Yeah. You coming? You can see I'm bringing his shadow box yeah, yeah. that has got his medals in it. Oh, well, that's neat. Yeah. So that's tomorrow night. And then our next big one is the um, Kim Stafford event at the Atkinson Church on April 21st mm -hmm. for early morning, the book about him and his father, basically, and some family life. It's very, very good. So those are our big two coming up. And then our, um, our mind-breaking thing. That's the big, big other thing. And I love my library contest. Thank you for like, forcing me to put that on the mic. Um, so that's been, been we started it on April 1st. The foundation is uh, sp sponsoring that and it will be paying for the gift, the prizes for that. And uh, so we, we're trying to like really promote this. National Library Week is during the month of April. So we figured why not do this? It is, um, a good way to bring visibility to the library and yes it's strategically timed but it's not inappropriately timed so I am not illegally doing anything so the question for my nine-year-old son yes was what is the prize <laughs> well okay good question and we he because he got it the information came home through the school excellent and so it all came home and I was Wait. trying very hard to convince him to do a, a Lego mm -hmm. stop animation which he's really oh. into Ooh. but his main question since we all raise our children with the dangling carrot so yeah. I, was like, well, I don't see where it says the prize I said well it says there's a grand prize what 
Yeah. Well, that's funny you should say this because we went back and forth with this About on the foundation. On yeah. Not just what the prize is, but if it should be ma mentioned in there. Because the, the original idea was to have ebook readers as prizes, mm -hmm. which is a great idea, but more for adults than children. Mm -hmm. And there's just not that many, we think, free children's materials out there. That's but of I, any quality? No. E so I'm glad to hear you say that yeah. because that was Linda Ackerson's opinion yeah. mm -hmm. and so we were thinking well so is that the best prize for the younger mm -hmm. prize winner you know prize winners and so we we didn't necessarily for the adults sure fine you know ebook readers would be fine but we didn't really know then where to head for the kids so we really wanted to get this out so we just said okay okay but we know that knowing is a motivator so if you have any great ideas and you are the one with kids so you would know best I should have called you a long time ago mm -hmm. no, it's a okay. Seuss stack a Seuss stack of Se books stack of Seuss books but that's really younger kids so well yeah I mean, but there's two age groups yeah. that are kind of younger mm -hmm. I think I know that motivators in the past not just for my own children but for other children is the the concept of of a gift card. The Barnes & Noble was a big uh -huh. motivator because it allows them to oh, do their own selection idea. and be uh -huh. empowered to make their own book choices. Uh -huh. um, so something along those lines can okay. could be... Okay. Um, well, so how many gift categories do we have? Like You have the preschool K, under five, elementary school, and middle school. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's hard, too, because you There's have There's like five or six categories. So you can get five full categories. Well, it could be more than that. There's, we're just giving one grand prize per age group. So, I mean, it would be like at least $50. You let him know that he would earn, if he won, at least $50, <laughs> okay? <laughs> just put it that way. It will be worth at least $50. <laughs> would that motivate him? He also is funny because he says, does it say anywhere I can't do it because my mom's on the board? Uh, no, there's, it says, there's who nowhere to find this boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, nowhere that says it. that. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? You're not one of the judges. Right. No, I just, I, I think that, I think that from a parental standpoint, any other current <clears throat> active young people, parents, I, I think not having it be a device would probably be preferable okay. for the younger set. I don't mm -hmm. know for middle school, but for, I, I mean, you know, that's management. That's, you know, having the pressure to decide what the access levels are on those devices. And I don't yeah. know if that's something that, you know, well, I agree. And putting yeah. hands of a device into the hands of any child under five is just mm -hmm. counter to a lot of research. So, yeah, you know. Well, yeah. So this, we, this is why this conversation wasn't finished. Yeah. Because there was a proponent Got it. on the foundation board that was like, let's just get up. You know, I'm like, yeah. there's more to think about with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, but we really want him to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad to know the schools because I sent it to the superintendent, so that's great. It's getting distributed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, relationships, they work. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's all I have. It went that way. So moving to item number six, communications. Linda? Yeah, it's all the Welcome. I'm going to bring three hats. Okay. <laughs> Eileen, I'm Linda Van Haverbeek. Oh, and right. I'm coming primarily because I'm on the foundation, um, oh. Oregon City Library Foundation. Okay. But I'm also the past chair of Friends of the Library, All and right. we had a meeting today. And I also belong to another library-related group. <laughs> so, um, so I was going to say for the friends, since we met today to remind them of the art show, and while the TRAG is doing a lot of the art show, I think it's under the aegis of the Friends of the Library. Yes. So. And that's uh, June 21st. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the foundation is going, coming right now into a really active phase. Um, I, I missed the last couple of meetings. I had some uh, dental and health issues and stuff. Uh, but we're, we've been meeting twice a month, the, the full board. And then I don't know what you call us, but Karen Martini, she's the... Uh, the chair, and I'm, you know, besides being the past chair, I'm the treasurer. And so we usually meet once a month, once a week, 
And so we've been moving on. We're inviting new people to join the board. Um, we have enough donations, enough uh, money that we need to be more um, aware of liability. And so we've purchased uh, director's insurance. And so now we feel like the big kids. Um, and we've decided on some timelines for, and we waiting until after the uh, um, groundbreaking for the library. And so um, 2015 is gonna be a big uh, emphasis on fundraising for the foundation because we know this is all going to pass because of my third hat, that group. I've been real busy with them. And um, I hope that you have seen or will see soon, there's a panel discussion on Willamette Falls Media mm -hmm. um, that the, um, Alice Norris was at, uh, uh, Mayor Doug Neely, uh, Brian Shaw, one of the neighbors. Um, I was on it, uh, William Gifford representing business and uh, Ted Thornstad, Thornstad um, representing the educational community. And so it gives you lots of background and what, what's going on. I wanted to let you know there's a canvas on May 10th, and it's going to meet at Jimmy O's at 9.30. And if you would like to join us, you are more than welcome. Um, if you want to give us money, you're more than welcome. Um, I spoke to the CIC on Monday night. It, um, short, there was a short um, PowerPoint presentation put together by the um, chair of our committee, and uh, she was called out of town, and so I went and did it for her. And it took maybe six or eight minutes for that, and then I was asked questions for a good another half hour. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also, I'm gonna go to another um, uh, Oregon City Businessmen's Alliance right. uh, next week, you know, right after Easter. So um, people are active and moving and doing things, and it's, so it's not just the usual suspects. You, you might Don? explain for our new board member what the CIC is, I don't know if oh. you know. Yeah, I was gonna ask that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Citizen so. Involvement Council. Council. I wrote it down because I yeah. always forget. Yeah. And that's people that represent different neighborhoods and they get the information out to the people they represent in their neighborhoods. Okay. So it's a citywide group. Great. Okay. Did you, did she say that it was for the PAC, this last work that you were she doing to pass? Oh, you said it. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't say that okay. word. <laughs> All right. It's for the PAC, yeah. To pass the bond. Thank you. And if you can pass our thanks on to the people who are doing the work, too, yeah, right now. Yes. Thank you. We Thank really, you really much. appreciate it. All right. And, and um, I'm going to see you guys, of those who can, on the 30th and the 1st. So. Yeah. For the well, we invited both the uh, friends and the uh, foundation to Great. join Good. us. For the mind breaking. Good. Yeah. Thanks, so, Linda. Speaking of that, can I ask one more question about the mind breaking? So. Um, Sid, this says that this is exercise for stakeholders. I mean, it's kind of, which is kind of one of those words that like, who's, who's not a stakeholder and who is a stakeholder? He's like, well, library supporters. I'm like, okay, well, I, I know who those are, but you know, we need broader than that. So I have invited, you know, you guys, the commission, the friends, the foundation boards, but I'm looking at inviting some other groups that I want to throw out at you. There's a couple other individuals who have, I've invited as well. Um, but I'm thinking a little bit more broadly. So I was thinking about the CIC to throw that out there to them. Because, you know, it's during the day, so a lot of people won't be able to come. But I think it would be, I mean, those are people who are in charge of all of our neighborhood associations. So that might be appropriate. The McLaughlin Neighborhood Association has a particular interest in it. Um, are you thinking just the officers of those groups or anyone? I don't know. I mean, I need feedback on this. Because it's every citizen of Oregon City then, isn't it? No, I don't want every citizen of I mean, Oregon but City. But like if CIC, CIC would just be, I mean, there's like 13 the whatever neighborhood associations or whatever, right? Yeah. But wouldn't that just be most of every citizen of Oregon City? Yeah. No, the people who go to CIC as representatives of their neighborhood association. Oh, the representatives yeah, from Yeah, specifically. Understand. Sorry. Um, so McLaughlin Board. Um, the Midtown region here has a little group that they've put together now. Um, the PAC people, because they're obviously library supporters. So, you know, I thought at the very least that maybe if we like got representation from all of those groups, that would be virtually across. One 
Brooklyn when I see Beaver, Beaver Creek and, and that kind of thing. Down. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd sure like to get a little bit of the rural groups. But yeah. aren't we? I guess we are. We're yeah. oh, all of us are representatives yeah. of right. outside the city. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The building committee, hopefully. Well, how about the Hamler Beaver Creek, the president? Or, you know, one she's, of those. She's people. very capable. I like her. I don't know how many CPOs are actually in the district. It'd What's be a CPO? Well, so some planning, planning organization. Oh, okay. Before they became a hamlet, that's what. Uh, and I thought I knew all the acronyms. <laughs> Jeez. Is it, is it just those two? It I might. Know. Be, that might be it. What? Yeah. Just Holcomb. just Holcomb and Beaver Creek. Okay. What about no Karis? Well, I know. Is Karis acting? Karis. Well, I think they have people and Clarks. Clarks. And are they are good? they in our district? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, See, they're in know. our district. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I would think. I, don't know. I used to live out on Karis Road. We still had an Oregon City zip code when we were out there. So. No, yeah, Karis is. In I can I can find place. out just be, you know officially if they're in our district or not. Exactly. It's the farther out it goes, the looser it gets in my this mind. Is, this is sort of related. Uh, our architect seems to be very skilled in building public awareness of what he's doing. Does he have any input on, on, on these kind of pre-meetings? I mean, from Well, he already gave me his input. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Right. That's a question. And it, it's not really enough people because, like, not everybody can come. Like, not all of you guys can come. Yeah. You right. know, so all they can expect yeah. is representatives from the, each of these groups. Right. And then some of these groups, um, you know, there's, there's cross coverage and stuff, but there will be different people that, um, you know, like I've invited Denise McGriff, and she's been involved in the interviews and all that stuff. She's a natural person to invite, but she's the president. But there are other interested people, obviously. That doesn't mean every single person can come or should come. I mean, it's like we can only fit so many people in a room is the problem as well. And I guess that's my question, is that the more people you add, the more input, which can be great. But is there, is is it, are we working in small groups or do you know what the day, I just know when we've done design work before, mm -hmm. it you have small contingents and then mm -hmm. right. to give the information. So do you have a sense of how many is too many? Yes. And will the work be whole group or are we, are we subdividing in terms of our conversations? That I don't know. Okay. So I can, I can talk to Sid more about that. I just wanted to get a sense from you guys if like you were okay if I went in that direction, if it works with the exercise. I think I think I would I would be thoughtful about making sure it it's manageable. Not too many. Right. Okay. Well, you maybe our And especially Plus. if there's a public forum that evening, right. if if mm -hmm. that's well publicized and people are aware. Yeah. So that's a mini one of these things. Okay. You know. But at the same time, you're going to get a lot of ideas. That you, I mean, you're going to have a core set of ideas that. that the representatives right. and those the main meetings are going to have. You invite the public, you're going to get those core, and you're going to get some really interesting outliers. Right. But yeah, the thing is, it's really also important to hear from people who don't like certain things. Yes. You know, I mean, you can't have everybody come who's a supporter. You need to hear early on, Different like yes, you do. what, yeah, mm -hmm. or like what is is really a, a hurdle or whatever in right. people's eyes. I mean, yeah. I, I had a conversation with my, my wife this last week regarding some of this stuff and what she wanted to see. She said she's one of her interests is to see something a space set aside for special needs kids. Oh. Which is a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, it mm -hmm. sure is. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the more I think about what DA said, the more I think it's a good idea. Um, that Clark's CPO, for example, um, one of their members is on the Clackamas County Library Board, I think. You know, so really involved mm -hmm. in the libraries and you know, would be an important representative. Well, that's the group that just did, well, Clackamas County just built Sunnyside. I don't know if, if that yeah. was the group that, you know, did it or not, but. And can I just ask one other question yeah. about the uh -huh. logistics of this, because I'm logistic lady. Um, is, is it anticipated that people will attend both sessions, or are they able to work as standalone sessions if people are only able to well, attend the one? The way I understand it, and I can send you more detailed information, mm -hmm. um, the second day, 
is um, you're building on what you've done the first day. Okay. So I think the first day is probably more critical. If, okay. You know, but like the second day, you know, you, then you do start having those conversations about, okay, so we want this, so and we want this. Now, what would you put next to each other? And for mm -hmm. me, like... That's interesting. It's, stuff. This is, that's, that's imperative. Yeah. The flow of the building yeah. is like the imperative, is right? Huge. And then prioritizing things and stuff like that. So um, I think it would be hard to step in on the second day if you hadn't been there on the first day, but not impossible. Okay. But definitely, if you can't do two, I would go for one, the first day. That's my sense of it. Okay. And then we'll be spending a little bit of time like wrapping up and stuff too, you mm -hmm. know? So, okay. Yeah. I know I'm still trying to. I haven't attended one of these, but he showed pictures, and there's like basically post its everywhere. Right. You know, it's one of those days. Yeah. yeah. And we're having it here, but still, this is like a limited space, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think the less people you have, the more meaningful it might be, but having it be key. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that to take away people's no. voice, but that can be really a lot. Mm hmm. I know. So, how do you hear from like yeah. a lot of people with a cross section? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think he does that a lot by okay, write your notes. Mm -hmm. Here's an, a, a then, topic or a concept, right. and then yeah. write your responses, and they mm -hmm. they collect them. Usually, yeah. yeah. And one of the things he does, one of the exercises is, for instance, they'll they'll put up like a whole bunch of slides of different. Carnegie's with additions or different historic mm -hmm. buildings with additions and get people to think about all the different ways like other people have done that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's like one. This is a good look. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm sorry, did you say who from the city commission will be attending if there's any? I, I don't presence? know. They've all been invited. So okay. I don't know who's attending from okay. that yet. Yeah. Hopefully several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And William's our only business representative. What are you talking about? Uh, you, you mentioned William Gifford as the, a business representative, representing business. It was on the panel. On the panel. Yeah, that oh, was okay. a completely different. That was a different thing. Yeah. Okay. So do we have a business representative for this, or have they been as the um, stakeholders? Well, William is part of the pack. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, well, that's right. No, good thought. But like chamber or what's the downtown and then the downtown organization the main street the main street mm. boy see this is why i asked you guys yeah this is getting big or even the chamber the chamber yeah chamber of commerce yeah mm. okay yeah this is getting big. that's the thing everybody's interested in the library awesome problem to have I think yeah That's all right good. okay thank you didn't need to go backwards any yep future agenda items are we done with any future agenda items probably yeah. somewhere along the line I would think we would have some more discussions about uh, the election and or how we what's going to be available so we can work with our own neighborhoods Oh, probably you should talk to the PAC. Mm -hmm. They meet every week, I think, right? Pretty much. And should, should I say more? Yeah, if you could, could, yes. could you describe what, what's going on? Yeah, what's going right on, now? actually. Go, go ahead and just go give ahead us and a come look. on up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we meet um, Tuesday evenings at 5.30 at the Living Room Bistro on 213 just south of Glen Oak. Um, small place though. And um, At what time, I'm sorry? 530 down. 530. And we're having um, speakers go, have been going to the neighborhoods and they've been asking to go to the PTEOs, PTAs. Um, there have been some that have been going to some of the businesses and different groups. And so I think uh, there's going to be some that are going to the Rotary, and I know I'm going to the um, Oregon City Business Alliance. Uh, we're doing a canvas, as I said earlier, on May 10th, and that's going to be uh, house door-to-door. -door. Hopefully, it will have enough people that come. We're looking, could use about 175 people, and uh, 
and they're hoping it's going to be knock and talk to people rather than just drop our, our uh, hangers, door hangers. Um, but if we don't get somebody come to the door, we'll drop the door hangers. Um, what else are we doing? We have the, the panel that I, that's on the Willamette Falls Media. Um, there's, they have um, a Facebook page, they have a web page. Um, it's going to be at uh, April 16th. They're going to go to Good Morning uh, Oregon City, and that's going to be at the, the bookstore at 7.30. It's a Wednesday morning, April 16th. So, the, ask me more questions in the middle. The, thing, the thing at the fruit place. Spicers. Spicers. Oh, but that's, that's fair? Oh, oh fair. yeah. Um, April 26th. They, they will be on April 26th at Spicer's birthday celebration. Um, mm -hmm. When the farmer's market starts the beginning of May, that uh, we've been, the pack has been invited to bring their materials there. How about the signs to put in your car? Oh, you're Just talking to the sign lady. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's I mean, my part in it. Um, I'm not in the speakers thing, and I'm not in this, but I'm doing them. <laughs> do we download them from emails? Oh, the ones for the car windows? Yes, you go to the website. Go to the website. Um, Oregon okay. City Bax Carnegie Library. Oh. And are there yard signs? That's me. Okay. Yeah. That's there. the whole name of it, Oregon City Bax the Carnegie, Carnegie Library. Library. All. Does yeah. it run together? The ones? Yes. How Runs do they together. sign up for a yard sign? Talk to me. I would like a yard sign. Well, I would like a yard sign. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So I right. would, I have, there's only, we only ordered 125, and so we have to make sure they get strategically placed. So, you know, we don't want everybody's right next door to each other. So from the website, is that how someone would contact you for the yard mm -hmm. sign? Uh, you can talk to me. I mean, too. Yeah. But if someone didn't know you. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you, do you want much in the way of, of signage or anything out in the, in the, outside the city limits or are you focusing mostly inside? Just inside well because you know we have limited resources so if you want resources we'll, we'll take that but we can't be anonymous um, because we have limited resources uh, and because people that live in the library district but not in Oregon City are not voting on this that we're not going to do much signage outside of Oregon City okay. oh so, would you clarify that for me I thought the People in the in the whole district were voting. No. No. It's only no. Oregon City. Only so Oregon City. Just okay, City. thanks. I'm sorry. Because it's uh, the approval for putting out the bond. Correct. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. yes. So and that's required okay. by the Oregon City Charter. So the focus is Oregon City, of course. The focus okay. is Oregon City. Okay. That's right. That's right. Did somebody else over here have a question? Did I skip no. somebody's question? No. I think I didn't. Just saying a sign might be appropriate out in the neighborhood where I'm at. I'm Would in the, be I'm in the city. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. When are you wanting to see signs around? Um, Mid-April. We don't want to tire people. Okay. So not before mid-April. We can talk in church. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. I'm on a dead end, so you may not want me to put one in my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not that we don't want you, Laura, but we can't put one at every house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm on a corner. So. I'm on a corner oh. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want one in my house, but you know, only my neighbors are going to see it. So, I have mm -hmm. other places that might be better. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and that I know there was when asked that. Can I make one? Maybe we can. Make yeah, one. and you're, we have the we have the um, <laughs> template eight, template eight by elevens on the website that people can put in their car windows. Yeah, so you can download that. Except I'm always in Beaverton, so that does no good for anyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it in your front window. We could do um, that. I was going to tell you, too, <laughs> that any of the resources yeah. after all the needs are met for the PAC, um, all that extra money, all that extra money, we haven't got enough to, right now yet, but anything that is extra is going to go to the foundation towards the, the foundation's fundraising. And, and what are you getting for sources of, of help at the pack at this point? What, what kind of, where's people the money just donating. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Mostly people, individuals. Yes, and then there's some of the businesses. Have you got part. some business support? Um, some of the businesses are, are, like, are giving us in-kind support, you know, like printers. and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Linda. Thanks, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very, very helpful. Can I, can I ask one more question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Of me? Bu budget, budget question for your PAC uh, work. 
how what what do you think the, the overall budget wants um, to be D DA I wasn't in charge of that and I don't remember but I think we're trying we were aiming to raise six thousand dollars to, to run, and, and to I think at this stage the last I heard two weeks ago is we could use another five hundred to a thousand dollars because we need to um, buy donuts and pay for pizza the day of the canvas um, was the canvas going to be just a couple few hours it seems yes. like that's what I heard. yes so it's going to um, we're going to meet at 930 at Jimmy O's people will be out the door by 10 you know a few minutes of gathering and then a few minutes of instructions they're hoping people will be back to Jimmy O's between 11:30 and 12 and then there'll be pizza in there so and and the more people come the less time it'll take and they're all, people are going out in pairs nobody's going alone um, if some neighborhoods are not covered that day because we didn't get enough people then people will go out later You know, May 10th is only 10 days before the end of the election, but you don't want to go out too much because it's showing um, lately that people are voting later and later and later. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to go mm -hmm. out too early. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and is this a mail election? Mail in election? Yeah, or it's the only thing we have, have anymore. Now. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have a voting place. <laughs> yeah, they all are. I miss that. But, but that's, that's one reason that um, we did is. put the. Um, the public meeting close to the time when the ballots came out we just thought well that couldn't hurt right. and then you know you can go to the county website there's um, the ballot measure languages there and you can look at the um, voter pamphlet um, statements that were turned in there were five turned in and they were all in the affirmative uh, supporting this measure and I have a question. Is this the only uh, special election issue on that ballot? It's oh, simple. No. <laughs> is, is it only no, for the library? No, there's county commissioner signs out. Yeah. Yeah, there's, wow. other, so there's, there's other things other, going so this on. this is part of the yeah, special election. I think okay. this is one of the few things from the city, though. It, for Oregon City, but yeah. it's a... I don't think this is a but special election. Oh, this is a regular, regular election. But it's a, yeah, it's a regular, it's a regular election. election. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's a okay. Yeah. But I, what else is on the ballot? I know I didn't. I didn't but for the look. city, this is the only. I think so. Oregon City, it's only the Yeah, library. you can go to the okay. county website and they have a whole, the whole list okay. there. Yeah. It's really pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. We're the first one there on top of the list. Oh, but I have no opinion on this, so I disregard that I said that. <sighs> The look up website. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the question. Okay. All set for adjournment? Aye. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Did second. you guys hear it? Second. Okay. Three, four, three, All in five, favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> we are adjourned. Oh, next meeting Aye. is, sorry, I was just announced that, correct? Okay. We have a next meeting mm -hmm. in May, second week. Wednesday at 5. That means adjourned at 6.